Saxon has a new album out. It's called Thunderbolt. But is it any good? An honest and an unbiased review coming up next on Music Is Your Friend. Saxon are true workers. They're all elderly men that are constantly on the road. And uh, in their career, I think they played well over 2,000 concerts, if I'm not mistaken. They had very little lineup changes. They're a really compact group that plays high power rock and roll all the way to heavy metal. And they put on a real show, no BS, what you see is what you get kind of an approach. They won't change their guitars like eight times during a show. It's just plain meat and potatoes kind of concert, you know? On some of their albums, their guitars really don't sound organic. And sometimes they would kind of bury the vocals underneath the guitars. And I was wondering why they were doing that, because Biff is a really good singer. Their riffs actually aren't that memorable, and most of their solos are also not that memorable. But when you couple, you know, decent riffs and decent solos with decent lyrics, with a crazy amount of touring, you get a band that really earns their stars and stripes. Their lyrics go from being kind of naive to really serious. Most of Biff's melodies are based in hard rock, but when he ventures into those like metallic waters, then you know you can really see him shine. His voice has a lot of drama, so when you couple that to like serious lyrics, then he can really tell the story. Plus, he is actually a surprisingly good singer and uh, can pull up some really crazy stuff even now when he's really close to retirement. Their new album is called Thunderbolt, and I won't lie, they Saxon kind of always has these songs that sound generic. I mean, I really don't like these songs, but Saxon kind of always seems to have a few of them on their albums. Basically, if it has the word rock in the title, it's probably not for me. So let's get into the songs. You've probably heard the first track of the album called Thunderbolt, and actually I wasn't that impressed, but I did like the production values, and that's where Andy Sneap comes along. The same guy that's doing the, Judas, the new Judas Priest album, so do the math. The next song on the album is probably the best song on the album, and it's called Secret of Flight. I really like the vocal melodies in this song, and the lyrics are decent. On top of that, the song has a memorable solo, which is not a common thing with Saxon. The next song is called Nosferatu, and Nosferatu is also a good song. You can guess what the song is about from the title, and because Biff's vocals sound kinda old, I can really get into that whole vibe, you know, black and white horror movie kind of a thing. They also have a song about Motorhead, who are their friends. It's kind of one of those songs that I'm glad that it exists, but I, I would never place it amongst my favorites. There are a few more songs with interesting parts, but they could be better as songs, you know. You can hear Johan Hegg of Amon Amarth on one of these songs and uh, he's singing alongside with Biff. You can also hear some Biff high notes, which he sings with a surprising amount of force. There are some cool parts in the lyrics here and there. There is also a non-orchestral version of the song Nosferatu, which I actually didn't enjoy quite as much with the one with the orchestra. But in general, most of these songs have a certain issue. Either they're too boring, predictable, and there are hundreds of songs out there that sound exactly the same. But at the very end of this album, there is a song called The Roadies Song. And it's a song about roadies, finally. I think I haven't heard a song about roadies since We Are The Road Crew by Motorhead, so in a sense this is kind of there, We Are The Road Crew. That's a good song, Saxon. To all the Saxon fans out there, I really advise you to listen to this song. So with this album, I can really say that I didn't enjoy the singles, but there are a couple of hidden gems on this album. Sadly, I think that the best songs from the album are going to go kind of unnoticed and underneath the radar. But I really advise you to listen to these songs, especially Secret of Flight, Nosferatu, and the Rodi song. Before I end this review and kind of give you my rating, I really want to uh, point out that Saxon has a whole bunch of underrated songs that you've probably not heard, or maybe you did. They are oftentimes omitted from the set lists, and it's actually a shame, because, you know, Saxon needs to play the hits. But in my mind, I think that these songs should be, you know, equally famous as 747 Strangers in the Night, 
or Crusader. And on top of that, I really think that they should be included on the set list. You know, Maiden plays Revelations all the time. It actually wasn't a hit, but everybody seems to know it because they played it so many times, you know? These songs are Dragon's Lair, from the album Killing Ground, Witchfinder General, English Man of War, and Made in Belfast. I'm begging you, please subscribe to my channel, and if you want to listen to these songs, buy the album, all of the links are in the description below. On top of that, you can find the links to buy all of these songs that I just recommended a minute ago. This album has a Music Is Your Friend rating of 26 out of 100, which is kind of okay. Because fair use is kind of a shady territory, I actually don't use any of the songs from the album. So I have custom music made for every single one of my videos. Uh, this song is called Saxonian Symphony, and you can find out more about it in the description below. So remember, music is your friend, so choose your friends wisely. Me and Albert are out of here. Adios.